Hello and welcome to our weekend release. This is our bonus podcast episode where we can see how much extra content we can squeeze into your week. Random things that have been sent in and extra bits from our week and how our advice went down with you, our G and Divas. We are doing Diva España with Amazon Music and it's time to give away seats on our plane to Benidorm. Oh, shall we pick some winners? Let's do it. This is always very exciting when we do this. Okay, well, producer Ben has uh, picked some winners. We've got a couple waiting on the line now, <gasps> but they don't yet know they have won. So let's connect to the first one and tell them. Bring them in. Hello, is that Amy? It is. Hello, Amy. I'm William. Hi, Amy. It's Jordan. You okay? Are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Now, where do we find you today? Where have we connected to? Um, Nottingham. You're in Nottingham. Okay, fantastic, lovely. And uh, Amy, can I ask you this question? Have you ever been to Benidorm? No. No. Do you want to go to Benidorm? Uh, yes, it'd be an experience, I think. I think experience is the word. Yes, it is going to be an experience. Well, congratulations. Amy, you are coming to Benidorm with us. Thank you. Who are you going to bring with you? Uh, my husband. Oh, your husband. What do we call your husband? Mark. Mark, lovely. How long have you been a couple? Uh, 21 years. 21, 21 years. years. Okay. Is um, is Mark a G and Diva by any chance? He's not. Well, I will make him one before he comes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, you've, you've got a month and a half. Don't worry. That's fine. Yeah, don't I'm worry. By the end of the trip, he will be a fully fledged D&D diva. <laughs> he'll D- be a D and diva or a G and diva. He'll be a D and diva. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and have you been? Are you? Have you been to Spain? Do you speak any of the lingua franca? Um, after a drink, probably. <laughs> after <laughs> after a drink, that's excellent. Yeah, you don't worry. You don't need to know much Spanish in Benidorm. A bit does help, but uh, does it? Yeah. If you can speak any Yorkshire, that usually helps. There's a lot of people. Any from York- Yorkshire? Yeah, a lot of people from Yorkshire have bars there. What do they? How about yeah. Lancashire? There's a few. How about Nottinghamshire? Mm, I don't. Probably, but there's a lot of people from Yorkshire that have bars there. Okay. And Newcastle as well. Right. Yeah. No one from the south, interestingly. Are you fluent in Yorkshire or Geordie, Amy? My mum's from Newcastle, so I can't hear the accent, but definitely fluent in it. You're laughing then. You'll be absolutely fine. Well, Amy, we are very excited to get to know you and Mark, your husband, more in Benidorm. Pack your bags. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And uh, you can you can hold my hand throughout the duration. And I, I feel maybe you slightly might be more on my way of thinking than maybe Jordan's. Am I correct? Yeah, my husband's definitely more on Jordan's though. So. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Fine. Well, one for each of us. Has he been to Benidorm before? Um, no, we have been to Spain, but not Benidorm specifically. Right, yeah. okay. He'll be fine. He'll, He'll be, be fine. fine. It'll be all yeah. fine. It's exciting. Yeah, it, it is. is exciting. It's gonna Are be... you a nervous flyer? No. No, good. Excellent. <laughs> that's that's all that helps. Amy, <laughs> big squidgy squeeze to you. We will see you in Spain. Ole! Ole! Thank you, Amy. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Shall we do another winner? Oh, yes. Why okay. not? Okay. Two for a... Two, you know, buy one, get one free, as it were. Here's the next one. Bog off. All right. No, that's buy one, get one free. Oh, I see. Yeah. Hello, is that Amelia? It is, yeah. Amelia, we can't see you just yet. Can you pop your camera on for us, please? I can try. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh, no, Amelia. pop it back off. And then oh. you're all right. <laughs> so rude. Right. I'm joking. You are so rude. I'm, I was trying to be funny. Yeah, but that came across as bitchy, and that's my role. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Amelia. Yeah, actually, we are joking. Um, hi, it's Jordan and William from Help I Sex to My Boss. You okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, we're good, thank you. Where do we find you? Where are you now? I'm currently in my office at work. I've put like oh. a big meeting sign on my door so that no one comes <laughs> And where's work? Uh, in Suffolk at the minute. Oh, in Suffolk, a southerner, thank God. Well, uh, no, I'm not. Know? I'm from Blackpool, but I'm down here for oh. work. I was going to say, she doesn't sound like she's from no, Suffolk. I don't. No, I <laughs> Oh, you're down here for, you're, you just have moved there for work? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, whereabouts in Blackpool are you from? Well, actually, it's near Thornton, so not quite Blackpool. Oh, no, no, but Thornton. Yeah, but it's easy to say Blackpool. <laughs> um, we have some news for you, Amelia. Yeah. Uh-huh. Congratulations, you're coming to Benadryl. <laughs> Woo! So excited. <laughs> Woo! This is, this is nice. Oh, hey, Amelia, do you know who you're going to bring? I do, yeah. It'd be um, my best friend from home. 
And what's their name? She's called Sebastiana. 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 I love it. Oh, Sebastiana <laughs> in Benedict. Where's Sebastiana from? Um, near Manchester, but lives in Scotland. Oh. oh she okay. lives in Scotland. Wow, she's okay. Got, she's got posh parents. Uh, she, uh, Sebastiana. Yeah. I mean, Sebastian is... I would love to be called Sebastian if I were uh, not called William. That would mm. be my sort of second name. Sue a Seb. But yeah, but as a as a girl, Sebastiana wasn't even sure it was a name. Am I right in saying Sebastiana's no, never been to Benidorm before? No, I don't think she has. Have you been? No. No. Okay, no, I was talking so about all... it the other day. What what is it? What is it about this competition that made you want to enter Amelia? I well, I was talking about Benidorm the other day, and I was saying how amazing that would be to go to because it'd be very funny. Um, and then I've listened <laughs> to you guys for ages, and obviously because like Jordan, you've moved down south from up north. I love listening to it because it just like makes me feel like I'm a bit back home. Oh, thank oh. you. Have you changed as well, Amelia, since I you moved changed. south? I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't changed. I just say sometimes I say lunch instead of dinner now. That's about right, it. Right, that's about it. That's the oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, how great. Well, uh, and you're not a nervous fly. You're happy with the whole travel arrangements. No, yeah, fine with that. Are you, uh, are you a good drinker? I'm, I'm Blackpool, so I think that probably says what it needs to say. <laughs> You'll be absolutely fine then. Make sure you pack your best flip flops. Bring us on hat. Oh, yeah. Bring in the Crocs. So, get your bikini. Get your bikini. <laughs> I've, I've got mine. Some paracetamol and ibuprofen, and you'll be absolutely <laughs> sorted. Well, Amelia, we can't wait to get to know you better in Benidorm in a month and a half's time. Uh, someone will be in touch with to do the finer details with you in due course. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much for entering Diva Spaniel with Amazon Music, and we will see you in August. Thanks, Amelia. Congratulations. See you in August. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Tell Bye -bye. Sebastiana we said hello. Yes. <laughs> well, they're fantastic. Two, two wonderful winners. Two wonderful, worthy winners. Um, we'll tell you later on in the episode how, how you can enter. Alliteration. Be <laughs> like Amelia and Amy and Sebastiana and Mark. Who are yes, all coming to another chance to win on Tuesday. Uh, shall we go to listeners' responses? Responses. Let's do that. Dear William, Jordan, EPB and Diego, I have news for Jordan about the gay ghost. I was watching a paranormal television show where they visited haunted locations when one of the experts said, yes, it's possible for spirits to make sexual contact. There's all the proof you need that the gay coast was a horny bugger trying to touch you. Lots of love, Victor. Thanks, Victor. A lot of people don't believe me about my experience with a gay ghost back in 2008. But really? Was, um, yeah. Do, what do you think about that story they don't believe? The ghost bit or the gay bit? The bit where it got in bed and I felt the presence <laughs> of a man in my bed. Right, okay. That bit. It was, yeah. Do, do you believe in ghosts? We've actually never really... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay. Oh, was That's that how, how it started? started. Well, you asked yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but then I think we got sidetracked yeah. and we never actually had yeah. the answer. Do so you, you believe in ghosts? Not really, no. Do you not? No. Yeah, did you know? Gay, never... pansexual, heterosexual. Did you never watch that one with Yvette Cooper, whatever she was called? No. <laughs> <laughs> so good, it was. No. Thank you, Victor. I, I do think that ghosts can be quite sexual. Raunchy. Raunchy. Horny. A ghost can get horny. A horny haunting. A horny haunting. Yes. Oh, that should be the name the of, title of the book. <laughs> no, this should be the name of our next script. A horny haunting. I could. What write, do you mean next script? I could write a horror film called Horny Haunting. Yes. Yeah. Go for it. And they'll probably, they'll probably get commissioned. Mm. Uh, this next one is from Kate Kennedy. More alliteration. Hi, William Jordan and Ben. Your discussion about the doctor calling William's name and asking him how his wart was in the waiting room reminded me of a time I went to the pharmacist. If you um, didn't hear, William talked about the time he went to the doctor's and had a wart on his willy. So, um... It was not on my... It was a large mosaic wart. <laughs> Very Grecian. Uh, and... <laughs> Just... <laughs> See some lovely people in togas on my left foot. And, uh, yes, the chiropodist... A couple of people saying that they've never heard chiropodist pronounced like that. Some people have said chiropodist, the fools. It's chiropodist. Oh, is it? Uh, yes, and then she shouted it out in the, in the reception. It was on his toe. It was on my, the sole of my foot. Oh, was yeah. it? Oh, okay. 
Uh, it's not there anymore, thanks for asking. I had a painful rash on the upper left side of my torso, uh, which I asked to see the pharmacist about. Given the location of the rash, we went into a private room for him to examine it, in which he proceeded to tell me that he thought it was a small fungal infection and it would heal with a bit of antiseptic cream. We returned back to the pharmacy shop floor, which was full of people waiting for prescriptions, and the pharmacist announced that if I start to see any kind of unusual-looking smelly discharge, I should get back in touch or speak to a doctor immediately. Horrified, I scanned the room of people looking at me sheepishly who had absolutely no idea that the pharmacist had only examined a rash and not any other kind of body part that might secrete discharge. I announced back even louder in the hope of being heard by the onlookers, thank you, if the rash gets any worse, I'll be sure to let them know. The thought of this moment embarrasses me still now. Kind regards, Kate Kennedy. Yeah, that is pretty awkward. Any pharmacist doctors listening, can you just keep it between the yeah. walls in the office? I think it's probably occupational hazard because, you know, rashes, ailments, mosaic warts, etc. You know, you get it's sort of day-to-day -day stuff. For them, it's normal. For them. But actually, we you know, we've all got funny bodies. Mm. And so we don't want everyone else to sort of know about our, you know, ailments and problems. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got to bedside manner and all that. Bedso what is a bedside manner? I've been well, told I don't have a very good bedside manner. Oh, really? But... Well, hey, but also, what sort of care are you? What care are you doing? Well, just when people are in hospital and stuff, I get bored, don't I? <laughs> I mean, you get bored if people aren't in hospital. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what is a good bedside manner? Well, what? focusing on them, not on you. Yeah, I do that. All right, t touchy. No, yeah, but what would what would be? What do you just sit in that big chair and watch them? We don't watch them. No. You just, you know, you talk to them and you, you know, ask them how they are and distract them with news and, you know, interesting anecdotes. You don't sit there and eat the grapes. If you're offered a grape, you could have a grape. Yeah. Yeah. How no, many I... people have you visited in hospital recently? Loads. Recently? Not recently, but I've spent Touch quite, wood. A, spent quite a lot of time visiting well, there we go. Hospitals. Um, now, this is from Avina. Now, you may remember that this uh, listener was the colleague who gave her lifts to and from work and then on her last day on the job asked to take pictures of her feet. It's better than paying for petrol. Right. So, Avina writes in, Hello all, thank you for reading out my dilemma. I feel I must address some of your questions. I had worked with this gentleman and shared lifts with him for about a year before he started being creepy. Oof. So I guess I was more in shock and didn't really know what to do when I answered the door and he was naked. Also, I just wanted to get to work so I could earn my much needed money at the time. Mm -hmm. As for the feet pictures, I guess I was too polite to say no in that situation and I was unsure of the consequences and again, I just wanted to get to work. It lasted no more than five minutes. After leaving that job, I cut off all contact with the gentleman. I have been made aware by one of my former colleagues that he is now back in prison, but this time for murder. I don't know the juicy details, unfortunately. Jesus wept. I guess a lucky escape on my part, otherwise I could have been part of a true crime on Netflix. Speaking about it publicly has really helped me and I also want to remind other folks like my younger self to be safe out there and in some situations it's okay not to be polite. Fully agree. You never know where a foot pervert may be lurking. Thank you for all you do, gents. Avina. Oh, Avina, thank you. That, that's kind of nice to know that speaking publicly has helped. Yes. I mean, that definitely was not a good situation to no. get yourself in. And thank God you weren't murdered. No. This is from F. Uh, and this one is another follow-up from F, whose partner's grandparents have been rummaging through the bins. We've, I mean, this is a second, the, the second follow-up. Oh yeah, to they the first were. They were burning their rubbish in the bins, mm -hmm. weren't they? And it was quite personal, private rubbish. Yes. Hi, William Jordan, EPB, and Diego. I'm afraid Jordan was right. It's not an outside fire. They burn the rubbish in the arga. Oh, okay. Used condoms, tampons, and all. Oh my! What is up? God, you don't need anything from that arga, then, do no, you? Don't. Oh, wow. What is going on? And people, <laughs> the world we live in where people are cooking condoms and tampons on an arga. Wow. Do your mum and dad burn out on the arga? I mean, she sometimes burns the chicken, but other than that, no. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> You're a horrible, awful boy. That's a joke. She doesn't burn out. I think she's a great cook, but it was a, it was a cheap joke. <laughs> I can't wait. I, I'm, when I retire, I'm going to get an arga. Right. I think that's when you know you've met it in life, when you've got an arga. 
I love the fact he now knows he's fully, he wants an Nog. Because when you when you came to my parents' old house, you were like, William, they've left Cooker on. Yeah, I thought, They've left Cooker on. They've gone to bed. I couldn't sleep all night. I was texting you from the next room going, your mum's left Cooker on. We're going to burn to death. Now, a couple of years later. Yeah, I'd quite like an Nog. No, I, I'm, <laughs> I mean. In I've always wanted one. Later, an Nog and a butler sink, a Belfast sink, whatever they're called. You're doing all right. Okay. Uh, anyway, F continues. I think Jordan is right. I think we uh, will stop having sex altogether and I'll take my rubbish with me everywhere until I can move out. Many thanks for your help, F. F, because you're living in their house, it's kind of a tough one. But next time you use uh, condoms or tampons, just put it in a little carry bag, a little tissue, and um, just put it in like a bin outside or something. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't believe people cook things in, like, not food in the. I'm sure it can be done because it goes. they go to very hot temperatures. But cooking bathroom waste, shall we call it, in an agar, and then sort of presumably then, you know, cr they're cremating the tampon. Oh. They sort of, you know, you then sweep out the ashes. Oh. Yeah, that's going to make me feel a bit queasy, if I'm honest. It's, it's disgusting. Anyway, thank you for all your responses. If you've got a question or story that isn't a dilemma or problem, this is the place where we can read it out. So drop into our DMs on social media or send us an email to help at sexandmyboss.com with anything that you want to share with us. We also love hearing back from the people we offer advice to, like F and Avina. Congratulations to our Diva Spania winners, Amy and Amelia. Another chance to win with Amazon Music on Tuesday's episode, whether you're listening on the regular feed or on the priority boarding Amazon Music feed. And for more sexted news and nonsense, sign up for producer Ben's letter via sextedmyboss.com. Don't forget, you've got until the end of the weekend to enter the Diva Espana prize draw. Listen back to producer Ben Adorm's Big Bing Bong on Tuesday's episode to get the code you need to enter. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.